What's up YouTube and all the cosmetologists that are watching this video? I want to tell you guys how exactly you're going to pass state board at the Ohio State Board of Cosmetology if you are going for the regular license because they have two options. You can either get the advanced cosmetology license or the regular one. So we're going to be going over the regular one. I'm going to be talking about the practical how you can get ready for it in the best way and then i'm also going to be talking a little bit about the written and how you can study for that but before i get into it i want to introduce myself so i am magic mistress and on my youtube channel i usually talk about magic tarot anything having to do with the unseen realm but i also am a licensed cosmetologist now and i also documented my school journey and most of it was just like vlogs and drama because that was cosmetology school for me so i'm gonna be telling you guys how exactly to pass it if you are kind of how do we say this um obviously you're watching this video you're probably not completely confident in what you're doing yet um especially if you're not good with the hair part i'm gonna be telling you how to bypass all of that so let's get into it basically when you come in you should have registered through e-license and once you get your confirmation email which has your time and date you need to print that out and you need to bring it with you when you go to the state board so you also need to have your driver's license with you and the minute when you walk in the door you need to go up to the people and show them your paper and driver's license and also, sometimes they will give you the paper there and it's going to say PT or it's going to say PTA. PTA is the advanced cosmetology license, so <clears throat> you're going to have the regular one. And basically, after they check you in and everything, you just wait there with all the other girls. When I was there, nobody was really talking to one another unless they came with their school. So yeah, if that is you, just make sure that the minute you get into the actual testing lab you do not talk at all because if they catch you talking this includes after any exam even after you get checked off on what you do for each thing you are not allowed to say a word to anybody if they catch you doing that they will disqualify you and that means that you will get a zero on everything that you just did for that section so it's very important that you learn how to be content with being silent now, when you are in there, it's not going to be completely silent. They're going to have music playing. When I was in there, it was 80s music. I would listen to that type of music when you're doing it. Um, because I know with me, I do have a disability that it makes it harder for me to adapt to certain situations if I don't do it the exact way. And when I was practicing, I did it in complete silence. So I do believe that is why I was struggling because the sensory was too much for me and it was just you know so keep in mind that is the type of music that they play and when you get in there you need to have one bag for spa portion and one bag for hair portion so they're gonna decide if you're gonna take the re the written or the practical first and i did the practical first so we're gonna go over what that's like honestly i think that's the better way to do it because the written is not that bad like you'll be fine once you go in there they talk a lot about the instructions the first thing they tell you to do is you're gonna perform the client protection and you're gonna sanitize so you want to make sure that you always have your disinfectant and your sanitizer on your station and before you do anything you need to wipe down your mirror, you need to disinfect everything, you need to bring two bags, one for soiled implements and then one is going to be for trash. And you're going to put the lines, like you know the trash bag, plastic things, you're going to put those on the two bins. And then you're going to have a drawer and in that time when you're unpacking everything, you need to take everything out of your unit and put it into the drawer. But make sure you take your blood spill kit out and put it in there's like um there's a big cabinet and then there's like a little drawer under the cabinet and then there's another drawer that you pull out that's and that's where you're gonna put your curling iron make sure when you're setting up after you disinfect everything you immediately put your thermal iron on that the curling iron thing and turn it on because that's gonna be the first thing you're doing 
and then after you put everything in the drawer make sure you close it okay i messed up with this because i'm again my disability it really just like runs everything and like when i take tests like that it's hard i passed literally by two points that's why i'm coming here to tell you guys exactly how you can pass because i did it if i could do it you could do it okay because i was really struggling but it's not because it was hard it was just because i'm mentally challenged than other people so basically you always need to keep your drawer shut because it's an unsanitary thing if you don't and they'll mark you off on that after that you need to have all your thermal stuff out so have your mannequin head you can't section off of it but you can brush it and they're gonna tell you that so make sure that when you um do the client protection you do towel and then the cape you don't need to do the other towel on top until later then after that they're going to tell you to do the thermal curl and how it works is that there's four four or five people there that are checking like what you do so they're going to come and call your number and then they're going to check you individually after they check you know after they walk around to the other people so if for me it took about like 10 minutes um that's not that long i was just waiting there to get checked make sure that you test your thermal iron temperature on the next trip because that is what i forgot to do and also make sure that when you do it you heat the base so you need to go on top of the hair and then on the bottom of the hair before you do your curl and then after you do the curl basically they're just gonna check if it's a full curl and then they walk away immediately after you are done put everything in your soiled implements okay because that is the main thing that they check they want to see that you're sanitary so i honestly say that as long as you have your sanitizer stuff on the table there should be nothing else there unless it's for whatever else you're doing next so basically what i packed i packed like a lot of stuff i packed each thing separate so when i put everything in my drawers I had a drawer with a bag of each section. So hair coloring was on one drawer section, perm was on one, and then the thermal and the haircut was on one. And everything in those bags, I packed multiple rat tail combs because if you drop it, you gotta put it away, you cannot use it again. And make sure that if you drop it, you immediately sanitize your hands before touching anything else. So basically, if you pack multiple stuff and you set it up that you don't have to look into separate bags for combs, it's just all in one section, you'll be good to go because that's how you get it done the fastest. And you want to be fast, but you also want to be um, organized. So that's the best way to do it. Make sure that when you have your thermal iron plugged in, that the cord is not touching the floor. They will get you for that. That is called unsanitary to them. So what I did with mine was that I had a rubber band and my teacher, like she wrapped it and then put it together so that it didn't touch the floor at all. And then after that, I immediately put it away. Always make sure that you put everything away when you are done with it. And then when they check you, they're gonna just say, thank you. It doesn't matter how you did. They're just gonna act like you did great no matter what. So the next thing is gonna be the hair cutting. And when you do the hair cutting, I recommend bringing two shears because I dropped mine, um, again, my disability, but also just to make sure that you're completely prepared, bring double of everything. Um, so I brought two shears, one razor, cause the razor, you know, it's kind of hard to drop, but I would even bring double of that. And then make sure that when you do the haircut that you do the razor all the way until the top of the ear. And then once you put the razor down, you could not pick it up again. So when you're doing the haircut, you need to hold your comb and your razor in your hand. You cannot put the comb down at any moment because they're gonna mark you down for that. So if you're doing anything, the thermal hair, all of that stuff, Yes, you're gonna put the comb under the curl when you do it, but you also need to hold that comb the entire time you're doing it. They really care about that. So same thing with the haircut. You got the comb in your hand, razor. Once the razor is done being used, you discard it. And then once you switch to your shears, you can go back and retouch the areas you did with your razor. And I highly recommend doing that because this is where I messed up, okay? 
um my haircut was awful and it's not because I'm bad at it I was actually very confident in haircuts and I did bad at all the things I was confident in and good at all the things that I didn't think I would do good so that's how it went for me because I was too busy thinking about time and everything. Yes, you're gonna have a lot of hair on your floor and before you do the haircut, you should have a towel on the floor. So make sure you pack another towel for the when you wet down the hair because all that water is gonna be dripping on the floor and they don't like that, you know, just on their plain floor, you need to have a towel there. But then after you spray down the hair completely, you need to get rid of that towel because then the hair is going to be on the floor. Honestly, I would just time yourself. Like I would do 10 minutes all the way up to the ear. Then I would do 10 minutes on sides and then five minutes on the top to just, you know, make sure everything's 90 degrees completely because remember, they're going to check the mohawk section. So they're going to take all this hair. They're going to check the sides. So, you know, if you mess up in a place, you need to do it at something that they're not going to check. They're not going to check down here. They're going to just check the mohawk and the sides. So, you need to make sure that those are good. They're even. And then after that, you need to sweep. But this is where I messed up. Because they told me I had five minutes left and I didn't have the top part done. So, obviously, I was freaking out. And, you know, when you start, you know, you're like, oh my god, what? You take really big sections and you just start chopping, which is, honestly, it wouldn't have been a bad haircut. I was just rushed. So, basically, when they are watching you, you need to be taking really small quarter-inch sections, you know, just to act like you're not following the rules or whatever. But there is no way you can get a 30-minute haircut done taking quarter inch sections okay only do that shit when you know that they're watching you but if they're not watching you you know just do it in a timely manner because they're gonna say five minutes they're gonna say 10 minutes and then 15 the timer is gonna go off and when it was five minutes for me they were like um you're almost done or whatever and i hadn't done the top so my first thought was oh wait they're gonna mark me down for not cleaning up I need to just say fuck the haircut and go get the broom. Well, basically I just started sweeping everything up and I got my whole station clean. But then after that, right when the bell rang, I was like, okay, I can't fix it now. And my haircut looked awful because I didn't go back and cross check. Make sure you do that. I didn't know that you could clean up after, but you can. So if you got hair all over the place and they're telling you, you got five minutes left, you leave the hair on the floor and you keep doing the haircut, okay? Don't be like me because trust me, when that bell went off, they said, okay, everybody can sleep, sweep the floor if you haven't already. And it was fine. So make sure you do it. But I also heard, this is just for emergencies. Okay, if you really, really struggle with the haircut, they are gonna come to you and ask, okay, are you finished with the haircut? And if you truly believe you are not finished, you're gonna say, no, I'm not finished. And then they're gonna ask what part you didn't finish. And the part that is shitty, you're gonna say you didn't finish it because they can only grade the things that you finished. So if you did good on all parts except the top, then they will only grade what you did and you will get a good grade, okay? So with me, I was stupid. And she asked me if I finished it and I said, yeah, but it ain't the best. I literally said that. Like, what? Because my part was that the middle was longer and it was at 90 degrees. But the, the rest of the hair was perfect. It was just this one middle section that I didn't finish. But I was like, how am I supposed to tell her that? Like, it's in the middle of the head. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I should have said that because then she wouldn't have graded that part. So yeah, if that does happen to you and if you don't finish, make sure you're honest with them and you tell them where because you might get a better grade. You sweep everything up and then you're gonna do the perm. And when you do the perm, you need to make sure that you do not, do not have gloves on when you are wrapping this shit, okay? I messed up this part and again, my disability, I got sensory issues when I had the gloves on and I couldn't feel the hair, something in me completely forgot to how to wrap a perm. 
And if you mess up the haircut part and you don't fix it before the perm comes around, this is why it's very important, take the 30 minutes. When I did it, like I said, in the back of the head, half of it was longer, half of it was shorter. You know what that looks like when you do a perm. Half the hair was out of the rods, they didn't go in the end papers, it was, it was bad, okay? But I still passed, barely. Wear the gloves when you are done with the perm. When it is already wrapped, then you can put the gloves on, then you can put the cotton on, and you're gonna grab a towel and your bottle, and you're just gonna stand there like this. So you're gonna be like, because I only wanna see two. This section is gonna be the retouch. This section is going to be the foils and then this section is going to be the relaxer retouch and this is virgin relaxer. The right front quadrant is going to be the outlining the quadrant. So that one is directly on the scalp and you're going to do an inch out and make sure that when you do this you are separating the sections very small. Okay, you need to be neat. They need to be straight. Just following those simple steps is going to get you more points. So do that. Make sure you outline the quadrant. You should already have the protective cream on from your perm. So when you do the protective cream with the perm, you will already have that step out of the way for the hair coloring stuff because technically you don't have to do it with the perm because the perm starts halfway down the head. But think about it, it's smarter. When the hair color stuff comes up, you don't have to waste time doing the protective cream because you're only gonna have 10 minutes. And part of that 10 minutes is gonna be you sectioning off the four sections. Okay, after you have the protective cream and you have it double draped because when you do the perm, you need to make sure that you have it double draped because remember, it's chemicals. So you should already have that on when you do the hair coloring stuff. And after you do the hair coloring, then you're just gonna stand there and wait and make sure that you discard of your um, brush after you are completely done using it so don't do it until you're done with the foils because you're going to do retouch then foils now when we do the foils don't forget that you have to start from the bottom up and make sure that there's no bleeding of the hair so i always think that when you when you paint the cholesterol on you need to make sure that you do it halfway and then like make your way up and then like kind of do like a little ombre thing. Like don't make it really thick at the top because if they see any cholesterol coming out of them foils, you're gonna get marked off for bleeding and all that. So you're gonna do four of them. Four foils, you're gonna start from the bottom up and you don't have to start from directly bottom of the head. You're just gonna pick some random section that's in this part and then do that. And that shouldn't take you that long because you're gonna use a pintail comb and then your brush. You know, there's not much that you have to set up for that. You need to make sure you throw the foils away and you also put your mock hair color away because yeah, it's cholesterol, but the second thing we're gonna be doing is the relaxer. And if they see that you're using a thing that's labeled hair color for the relaxer, uh -uh, it ain't gonna be good. And you can't label it cholesterol. You have to label it mock hair color. Everything has to be labeled from your products to your bags, literally everything. That is half the points of why I passed. And that also makes you feel more secure that even if you start messing up at something or if you're, you know, whatever, you know that you're getting the points for sanitation and labeling. So when you're done with the hair color, you're going to put all of that away. And then you're also going to pull out your rat tail combs because those that's what you're going to use for the relaxer. And then you're also going to pull out your mock relaxer, which is cholesterol, but it's going to have that label on it. That's different. When you do your sections, make sure they're small and make sure that you do it farther away than closer to the scalp. Okay, if you're like an inch instead of a half inch, that's fine. They just don't want to see it on the scalp at all. So yeah, make sure it's far enough off and then you need to do like an inch of the retouch. And then when you put your hair back, make sure you don't directly stack it because then it's gonna bleed. You need to make sure that the section's small and don't lay that cholesterol on too thick because um, you know, that's how you get bleeding too. So then they're gonna check you off for that. After you do that, 
this card of that comb, you're gonna grab another rat tail comb and then you're gonna do the virgin relaxer. The virgin relaxer is gonna be half inch off and then you're gonna leave out the ends. And then after that, they're gonna come by and they're gonna ask you to do smoothing. And then you're gonna have your gloves on, of course, two fingers, you know, going down the hair. And then you're gonna pack up because now you're done with the hair section. So you're gonna completely sanitize everything. And also I wanna put this in there that in the beginning, they're gonna tell you that you can go and get any water supplies that you want. This is true for the nail and hair portion. So if you have your water spritzer thing and it's not full of water, you need to do that in the 15 minutes when you're setting up with the client protection. Same thing with nails. And we're about to get into that because the 15 minutes that you have for that section, you need to fill up everything with water that you need. After you sanitize everything for this one, you need to make sure that you wait for them to check you off. You can't just leave, um, you know, because they're going to be checking people off and everyone's going to be leaving. But you cannot leave until they come and see that you actually did it. Make sure you get everything out of your unit. You disinfect the drawers, inside of the drawers. Make sure you get your curling iron. Don't forget that shit. And then just throw both of those bags, including your trash, in your big bag. And then you're just gonna take that home and sort it out later. They're gonna tell you you can go out for lunch. Lunch is about an hour long, but I would get there at least 45 minutes beforehand, especially if you have to go to the bathroom because bathrooms there, there's only two stalls. So if you gotta go to the bathroom, you better hurry up and go because I'm sure other girls are gonna wanna go to the bathroom. And you're gonna come in and then you're gonna have your spa portion bag with you because the other ones should be in your car. And then you're gonna go in the um, spa room set up everything after they read you all the directions and part of those directions is going to be the water thing that i was talking about and another thing is going to be that if you need to open anything and you don't know how and you need help the 15 minutes that you're setting up is the only time they can help you you cannot ask for help at any other time you're on your own at that point so if you have any questions ask the people in the 15 minutes but the main thing for me was again the sensory is, it's very overwhelming for me. So it was really hard for me to really hear the directions. And one of the directions was that there's gonna be a desk and then a chair. You need to push in your chair when you're done setting up, but you also need to have your mannequin at the end of the desk. So it's gonna be on the right hand side at the end. Okay, so make sure you put it there because with me, I put it in the middle. And then the drawer handle was underneath it and I couldn't open up the drawer and I was just freaking out. So then I put everything on my desk and then she came around and told me I did it wrong. And then I had to switch it and then I was the only one in the class that was just like scrambling to get everything ready. So make sure you put it at the end. Make sure you put everything that you don't really want out inside the drawer. And then you can also open that drawer when you're doing the facial because you're going to do the facial first. I had a bag specifically for my facial. And then I had another bag that was specifically for my nail stuff. So I wasn't confused at all. And then I also did the same thing with towels. With my towels, I had black towels for facial and then white towels for nails. Just to make sure that like I knew the difference, you know? And the finger mold must stay out on your station. You cannot put that inside your drawer. So once you're standing there, you need to have the turban on. The hair cannot be showing at all. And then you need to have the plastic cap over the turban. The plastic cap cannot be touching the skin anyway, period. You must have the towel and then the cape. And then you're all ready to go. And the first thing they're gonna ask you to do is the cleansing. So then you're gonna put the cleansing cream on. But what are you gonna do before that? You're gonna take out your spatula. You need to have three spatulas for the facial and then you need to have three more for the nails. So you're gonna take out the spatula, put on your skin, throw the spatula away. The difference between the spa portion and the hair portion is that you're only gonna have one trash can. In that trash can, you're gonna put your soiled implements and your trash. It's just gonna go all one thing. So after you use that spatula, you immediately put it in that bag. And then you put the stuff on the face. You know, you're gonna go from the bottom up and make sure that you're light, you're not pulling on the skin because they're gonna be checking for that. And another thing that you need to do is that you need to take out the Q-tip, go from corner to center, and make sure that whenever you use the Q-tip, 
you need to use it in a different way for each thing. So if you're doing the lips, you're going to do one way, then flip it, then this way, then throw it away. Then when you do the eyes, you're going to do it one way, flip it, that way, throw it away, one way, other way, throw it away. So you're going to use three Q-tips, I believe, for the facial for the cleansing cream and then you're going to use two and a half for the nails when you clean under the free edge and make sure that you really use that and you show them that you're doing that because again the thing they care about the most is sanitary they want to see that you're following the infection control after you do the cleansing cream they're going to come by and then you get to remove it and make sure that when you remove it you use different cotton pads for each thing too like don't overuse it you know you're probably going to go through a lot of cotton rounds when you do this but with me I did one that had astringent on it and then I did a dry one and then I used those together and then I did two more of the same thing and then my face was pretty all good to go. You're going to wait, they're going to ask you to apply the massage cream and then when you apply the massage cream the same way you did with the cleansing cream, then they're going to ask you to do the massage movement. I think effleurage is the easiest one because there's not much you're doing, you're just kind of like playing with the face you know what i'm saying and then they're gonna ask you to do the petrissage which is the pinching type of thing on the cheeks and they're gonna ask to pull me and then they're gonna ask the friction the friction and blah, blah 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 they're gonna ask you to remove the massage cream and then i would do that the same way the cleanser cream just a little bit of stringent with the regular one wipe that down make sure you wipe it up because you always have to move up with the face. Do not drag on the skin. Do not do anything that looks like you're being really hard on the mannequin because again, you have to act like this is a real person. And the main thing they're gonna look for is that there is nothing on the face and they're also gonna look for if it's shiny in any way. I'm just gonna move right into the nails. So cleanup for facial was only like 10 minutes long or even five minutes because all your nail stuff should already be on the table and then you just throw everything else in your trash. And then with nails, you're gonna have that fake mannequin hand. And remember, when you cut the nails, you need to make sure that you catch the plastic because if they see it, and trust me, they will, that girl was right behind me when I was cutting the nails, she saw it. If they see it go on the floor and that you don't pick it up and then sanitize your hands, of course, and then go back to doing whatever you wanna do, they will get you off for that. You need to catch all the nails that you cut. So, you know, don't be cut in like fast. Do that part like very carefully. And then when you start filing, that's when I go ham. But make sure when you file corner to center, don't do the seesaw, you gotta go. <laughs> Especially for a nail tech, I'm a nail tech. I was used to doing that at my job. But when you're there, you got to do it the state board way, which is corner to center. And trust me, they're going to know if you do the seesaw because it makes a weird noise and it's way different than corner to center. So they're going to know. Make sure you practice that and get in your head how to file the nails in the fastest way possible. And honestly, do most of it with your clippers. Cut them into the shape you want and then just like you know, touch it up. You're gonna apply the cuticle remover, make sure you don't touch the skin with it, you keep it up, and then you're gonna push them and then clip them. Make sure when you clip, you don't drag it away. Just literally just like outline it, like, not like, cause that's what I'm used to doing at my job, but they don't like it that way. Don't forget to clean under the free edge. You're gonna have your cotton rounds and then you're also gonna have your Q-tips. The Q-tips you're gonna dip into the bowl and then you're gonna clean the, under the free edge of each nail. And remember when you do this, you're gonna use two and a half because you gotta switch between each nail. It has to be a brand new Q-tip thing, you know? So then after that, you're gonna buff and then you're gonna do the cuticle oil. And then you're gonna do the massage and they don't really need to see like anything extra they just want to see the palm top and the fingers so you just got to do you know whatever massage feels right to you i guess they're not going to ask you to demonstrate the movements you're going to clean off the massage cream and then you're going to have your nail polish bottles already opened because you should have done that when you had your finger bowl out and everything because now your hands are oily you need to make sure that everything is open when you have the chance do the clear coat 
do two polish coats if you can if you can do two make sure you bring a dark color they didn't say it has to be red because you know usually it has to be red but it just said any dark color so i'd bring a nail polish color that you can do one coat with and then do one coat try and do the top coat but if you can't make sure that you just get it off the skin if you did get it so with a q-tip nail polish remover get off the skin and then you're good you're going to turn your hand around to the front and then you're just going to wait there for them to check you and before you do the spa portion they're going to have you put your really big bag in the hall because you know it would it'd be very crowded if you didn't so then after you're done with the nail stuff they're going to tell you to go clean up so you bring your unit back to your station you put your trash bag in your unit disinfect everything make sure all the nails are off the floor you know all that they're going to check you just leave your bag at your station because now you're going to go and take your written test if you haven't already you would brush up on is the types of hair color the glands of the skin the parts of the nail and then also how to identify um, nail diseases and disorders. So basically that is it. And if you wanna know my score, I got a 77 on the practical. That is all. And now you know exactly what is going to happen when you go to stay bored. So there will not be any surprises. Trust me, I walked through every step because I am the type of person that if there's any type of surprise, it just throws me all off. So I had to make this video in case somebody is out there that needs the walk through steps of how to pass. So if you guys do end up going to Safeboard pretty soon, I would love to hear the updates about it in the comments. And again, this is the guidelines for the State Board of Cosmetology for Ohio. And that's located in Grove City, Columbus. And I highly recommend driving there the day before. That's what I did. So then you're not, you know, delayed and stuff when you're there. And another important thing is that when I went there, it's, they're done with all the COVID stuff. You walk in, you check in, you don't have to call or anything. They might have said that on your email, but they're done with that. So just make sure you walk up to the doors and make sure that you're not late. If you are five minutes late, they will not let you in there. If you do not bring your license, they will not let you go. I watched a girl who said she drove an hour from home and they told her to go home because she didn't have her license and she had to reschedule her test. Refresh your mind of the steps and you will be good to go.